in our culture and around the world, like subtle distortions are rampantly making their way into our churches, our sermons, our worship songs, our conversations, our beliefs. And the danger of these distortions is that they often sound biblical or right. But we need to know how to discern when they deviate from the truth. Like how do we train ourselves to recognize the difference? And how do we respond when we see a difference? Think one distortion like this. It's known as the prosperity gospel, a belief that asserts that God's aim is to make believers healthy and wealthy in this life. Like we enjoy excesses and we live like king's kids. Now addressing these subtle yet false claims is crucial because this theology is rampant among churches here and around the world. About half of self-proclaimed Christians in the United States believe that God gives material wealth to those who have enough faith. 96% of self-proclaimed Christians in Nigeria, 82% of self-proclaimed Christians in India believe the same thing. Like those numbers are staggering, especially when you realize that, that thing is a lie. And the implications are significant, like for eternity. Think about what happens to someone's faith when this this person they're praying for, their mom, isn't healed of disease. When someone doesn't get the promotion they've been praying for. When they aren't wealthy, like they thought a king's kid would bring and have wealth. And what about Christians who are persecuted for their faith? Like, are they doing something wrong? Does God not love them as much as he does a, a multimillionaire over here? Are they somehow less faithful to him? The prosperity gospel distorts our understanding of wealth in this world, both what we have and how we're supposed to use it. It skews our view of what God actually promises us in His Word. And the ripple effect of those beliefs is huge.